Welcome back to Stories Untold. Let's begin the fourth and final episode, The Last Session. And once again, just a quick reminder, anybody who's sensitive to, well, photosensitive epilepsy, watch out. Game comes with a warning for that. I think that's enough of that for now. You're quite fond of this show, aren't you? Okay, come on. Let's get you down to the observation room. This must be starting to feel like home to you. Don't worry. I'll try and get you out of here eventually. I'm just in here. Okay, are we through in the next room? Just relax and we'll get started in a moment. Right, Mr. Asian, now are you ready? Just hit record on the tape deck in front of you when you're ready. This is subject 12198623, new session entry. We have myself, Dr. Alexander, leading, and in a room we have our patient, Mr. James Asian. As we know, James has recently recovered from a two week coma following his accident. In our last three sessions, James's attempts to recollect events of the accident seen him merging his memory with his imagination. These episodes have always ended in panic and we've had to terminate the session abruptly. Let's try and do this one better, James. So when you're ready, let's bring this back. I know how difficult this must be, but you can do this. James. It's time to remember. Your mind. It's like a conscious black box. It can show you your memories. Look into it. from the rest of the world, locked inside your coma. We interacted with you daily, encouraging you to wake. Your family would do number puzzles with you. Anything, really, to bring you back. People needed answers, James. Do you remember? I have another signal here for you, James. It's at 5610 FM. You can't miss it. Interesting. This is definitely not what I expected. Which has been the case for every single episode of this game so far, which is awesome. Okay. So we're sort of maybe in memories or something. Let's listen. Looks like there's only one broadcast.
Eighty-six, twenty-three, zero, four. Type in the numbers, James. You gotta see this. I swear they start out by saying this is twenty F. F? Surely that's not part of it, is it? Twelve, nineteen, eighty-six, twenty-three, zero, four. Oh. That was it. Okay. Report. So maybe these really aren't connected. Maybe these really are imaginations. That would explain why I keep seeing these threads running through everything. Jennifer and the year 1980, what was it, 86? So maybe those are the kernels of truth. Maybe those are the real things after the accident, whatever that was. This is the same as before. Oh. Wilson Police Department road traffic accident report file. So it's a traffic accident. Okay, we gotta read this. Let's see. Two vehicles. Date and time. Um, I think this is 86, but I can't really tell. However, the time. Look at the time. 22.05. That's the time that was on the clock at the start of the house abandon. Pleasant Hill Forest Road. Fatal accident. 20F. Oh, that's part of the password. 20F. Fatal accident. Injured one. Number deceased. Is blotted out. Hmm. James Asian. Injured. License something something. It's my street address. Wayview Drive. Wilson. Postcode. Date of birth, 63. Station wagon, white. Station wagon. That's the type of car that was... That I got out of. In the house abandoned. Oh, that would explain why it was all smashed up. The second time through. That must be from the accident. Passenger. Blotted out. So is this driver two information? Yeah, so this is driver one, this is driver two. The person who was killed, I guess. Charles Hennings, deceased. Also from Wilson, driving a blue se sedan. Born <clears throat> in 1940, so they're much older. No passengers. Description. Arrived on scene to discover two cars that had been involved in a near head-on collision, Mr. Asian found lying down outside his vehicle with head injuries. An ambulance was immediately called. His passenger was trapped in the vehicle in critical condition from wounds sustained in the collision. The driver of the blue sedan, Mr. Hennings, was found dead on arrival. It was noticed that there was a strong smell of whiskey from the driver and an empty whiskey bottle on the passenger's seat. Mr. Asian was questioned on scene. He described an oncoming blue sedan being clearly out of control, which he swerved to avoid. Mr. Asian's passenger was his sister, Jennifer. The driver of the blue sedan is an ex-police officer of 20 years. Hmm. Hmm. Well, the thing I'm immediately suspicious about is whether Asian actually is responsible for the accident. Obviously, that's how they're trying to paint it with the smell of whiskey and all of that, but... If the driver of the blue sedan is an ex-police officer of 20 years, I would not be the slightest bit surprised 
if all this shit was just doctored up to try to blame this person. When it was actually quite possibly the police officer who was drunk or something, or otherwise driving out of control. But, obviously, Asian keeps blaming themselves. I mean, that would explain what happened at the end of the house abandoned, right? The text saying, like, uh, what exactly? I don't remember exactly what the words were, but basically just like, say that you did it. Say that you did it. Say that you did it. Maybe that's like him being interrogated or questioned by the police, trying to get him to just admit to doing something that they didn't or something. But they definitely felt guilt. I'm not sure about guilt for the other person, but definitely guilt for their sister. And it doesn't say whether they... whether their sister died. Uh, it just says... The passenger, Jennifer, was trapped in the vehicle in critical condition. I still hear it moving. Ah, nothing. Okay. Oh, yeah, right. So it still wants the report. Line 1, 2, and 3 from the report? Like... Oh, is it the stuff that's circled? I bet it's the stuff that's circled. Is there a third one? Yep. So the first one is 20F-Fatal Accident. Then Empty Whiskey. Control. Find the signal, James. Listen to the voices. You have to face it, James. Finally. Officer Williams interview. Audio archive reporting officer. I wonder if that voice that we just heard, you have to face it, James. I wonder if that's Jennifer. It's not like him at all. I've worked with Officer Hennings for six years and not once have we even talked about alcohol. Drunk driving. He, he was a father, a husband. He was fine. No way he caused it. Oh, this is such a cover-up. him. This Haitian guy. He's got something to hide. Mm-hmm. Such a fucking cover-up. Panel, fixture... This doesn't make sense to you. You step out into the hospital ward, only it seems abandoned. Your vision is blurry. Well, the exit's over there. This certainly feels like an emergency. <laughs> that's so cool. It's like a text adventure description of stuff that's not actually a text adventure at the moment.
Sometimes they make you watch your past sessions to see what really happened. Driving home? Don't have that fifth pint. Ah, oh, so blurry. Three steps to recovery. You tense up. Someone else is here. We're not leaving. You wash your hands, but in this place it feels pointless. sobbing while his sister died in the car next to him. While Hennings died next to him. What the fuck was he thinking? She was still alive when we got to her. If he'd have done something, they could all still be here. If he'd have done something? I mean, he was just in a fucking accident. say. Oh, it's maddening how it gets blurry when you get up close. I can almost make it out, but I can't quite. Today was the first session with Mr. James Asian, although I fear it will certainly not be his last. When asked about events that have happened in the past, he confused fact and fiction and told us a story about a computer game that was talking to him. I think he was back at his own house, his mum and dad's house, and he always talked about a room with a red X, one he couldn't get in. I don't know what any of this means or what it's going to do with the accident, but I guess uh, some more sessions will maybe reveal that. We're going to try again tomorrow. I wonder what the significance of the red X is. You grab the keys from the table. They weigh heavy in your hand. That's similar to what is said in the house abandoned. I want to make sure I don't miss any tapes. Because that one looks like it could have very easily been missed. Caught a glimpse of the room, you guess that's why there's no detail here. Huh. You spent most waking moments in here. Seats for visitors. Not that you've ever had any. The only video they have. Some horror compilation. Trash. I can't get to the TV, can I? Somehow I clicked out of the game. Another doctor. Another door you never opened. You don't know what was in here. The waiting area is dark, but you feel a presence right behind you. <laughs> Whoa. The hell? What just happened. My character, like, jumped up for a second or something. Hm. 
someone breathes on your neck standing over you. <laughs> Fuck me. <laughs> There's gonna be something behind me at some point, I know it. You feel dread in the pit of your stomach. Okay, we have a 22-year-old male just brought in from a vehicle collision. He was awake and mobile at the scene, but collapsed on arrival to the emergency ward. The other passengers died in the accident. I'm getting no pulse. Prepare for defib. Amp charge full to 10 and give me 100 joules. Come on, 100 joules. Charging up full to 10. Oh, I think I need to actually do it, huh? Come on. Okay, um, amp charge to 10. Can I turn this one? Ah, nothing to see. Uh, what was it, 100 joules? Can I... Wait, do I need to do something else to use this? on the screen, please. Oh, this one. The one on the screen? Ah, there we go. Clear. No reaction from first stage. Let's try higher. 200 joules. Keep the amp charge to 10. <laughs> 200 joules. Keep the charge at 10. Let's go. Clear. Okay, we have a reaction of some sort here, a weak signal. Let's keep going. Increase again. 360, charge full. Come on, 360, hurry. Clear. Well, would you look at that? It seems we have a pulse. Rhythm is stable. We need to run an x-ray right away. Okay, that was... X-ray. Where are we with that x-ray? Let's get it going now, please. Um... It was... This thing, right? We need to charge this. Right? Can we wait a second? Yes. Looks like an intracerebral hemorrhage. We need to drain this now to relieve pressure. Prepare for trepanation. Switch on a drill, please. Okay. Drill, please. It's on? Oh, wait. I need to press the button. Station. You've made excellent progress. You're doing great. You need to stay calm and try to relax while we go through the next step. We're going to attempt to alleviate some of this discomfort. Duh. Five again, the time of the accident. Not only is tonight New Year's Eve, but tomorrow you leave on a six month trip abroad with friends. Mom, Dad, and your sister Jennifer have decided to throw a party to celebrate it all. The house is full. You're in the living room, and as usual, you don't recognize a soul. This happened on the day before? A six month trip? Jeez. Look around. The room is full of chatty strangers, mostly friends of mom and dad. There is a door to the hall. Go to hall. 
you push through the crowd into the hallway. The hallway is as welcoming as ever, only this time the folks have put a great big banner up across the main wall. Half-finished drinks are abandoned on almost every horizontal surface. Stairs lead up, although the party is firmly downstairs. Look around, same as ever, stairs, door to the living room, and door to the kitchen. I want to go to the kitchen because that has the utility room door, which they described as having a red X. Go to kitchen. They say all the best parties are in the kitchen. The kitchen is full of people and loud. There are drinks and food on the table, and the party's in full swing. Dad has cooked a hog roast, which sits proudly on the table, although no one is eating it. There's a utility room and writing on the wall. Also, Jen is here signaling you. Writing on the wall. Once again, that returns. Uh, use... Or... Look at... Writing. Uh... Can I not look at the writing on the wall? Go to utility room. Just as you're about to head inside the utility room, Jen places her hand on your shoulder. You hug. You're gonna miss each other. You thank her for the party. She asks if you are enjoying the party. Uh, yeah. You tell her it's great, even though you don't really know anyone. She tells you to enjoy it anyway and to loosen up. She asks you to get her a drink. Get Jen a drink? You pour Jen a drink and one for yourself, too. There's never an awkward silence with Jennifer. She always has a question. She asks if you have everything sorted for the big trip. Y yeah You tell her yes, that you've packed everything with plenty of room to spare. Another hug. Your family have really gone out of their way to make this trip happen for you. It might be what you need to get some perspective and maybe not fuck up so much. She's going to miss you. You're going to miss her. She walks away. Jen has disappeared into the crowd. You're left standing, nodding and smiling at the approving faces. There's so much to do for this move. Can't mess it up. But first, a drink. Okay, uh, use... A drink? <laughs> uh... Use drink? drink. You pour and down another drink. Anything to move the night along. Uh, this isn't looking good. If they're drinking. Alright, let's go to the utility room. You open the door and peer in. You're never allowed in here normally. This is where dad keeps his fine wines and whiskeys. Ceiling to floor racks. A collector. Although he does actually drink them too. There's a bottle with a ribbon around it, and a card. Use card. You pick up the whiskey and the card. It's your dad's handwriting. Son, we're so proud of you and everything you've achieved. You've earned this. It's a bottle of 25-year-old double malt. You shouldn't really, but you have to try it. With your whiskey in hand, you've taken the room about you. There must be hundreds, no, thousands of pounds worth of drink in here. You really must thank your dad for the whiskey. Let's look around again. Is it still the same? Racks of fine wines and the door to the kitchen. All oh, right, we're still in here. Let's go back to the kitchen. You head back into the kitchen, clutching your new best friend. You stumble out of the utility room and back into the kitchen. That is one strong whiskey. You take another swig and give the thumbs up to Dad across the room. He nods and winks. Yeah, this is really not looking good. But the way they set it up made it seem so obvious that the whole thing was, well, a setup. Maybe this is a fabrication, something they tr like a memory they tried to implant in Asian's head. Trying to get him to admit to something they didn't do. 
Uh, go to hallway. Go back out to the hallway. A few bumps and laughs on the way through and you make it to the hall. You stop dead in your tracks. It's Jen, covered in blood. Yeah, this isn't a pure, accurate memory. So I don't actually trust this. Um, look at Jen. She's staring straight at you. No one else notices. Help, Jen? Blood is dripping down her face. It's mixing with tears. Um... Whoa, I'm sorry I don't... What is happening up there? Can I just leave? Go upstairs? Whoa, I don't... Under, what? Um... <laughs> Jen? Uh, things are getting weird. Jennifer passed away before we could get to her in surgery. We did the best we could. I'm so sorry. Where is she? Let me see her. Please, Mrs. Asian, take a seat. I don't want to take a seat. Let me talk to her. Now. I'll arrange for you to see her. In the meantime, James is in recovery. He's stable for now. I don't want to see him. Don't want to see him? You're standing in the hallway. Something has stopped you in your tracks. While searching your mind, your sister interrupts. She waves her hand in front of you and asks if you can drive her home. You still feel out of sorts. Those words echo. Can I just say, no, I won't drive you home? Um... Doors to the kitchen and living room lead from here, while stairs can take you up. Let's go upstairs. You'd love to call it a night, but Jen is waiting patiently. Can I decline? Decline, Jen? Uh, I think I have to. Take Jen home. Drive, Jen. Go. I don't say yes to Jen. Uh, yeah, yeah. We can talk in the car. Go get your keys. Okay. Go to car. Look around. Towards the kitchen and living room lead from here while stairs can take you up. I'm in the hallway right now, so go to front door. There's no point until you find those car keys. Oh. Go upstairs. Nope, okay. Uh, look for keys. You need to look for them. They must be either in the kitchen or the living room. Go to living room. You're sure your keys are in the living room. The living room has a much more relaxed atmosphere compared to the kitchen. Various guests are sat on the chairs having civilized conversations. There's a coffee table in the middle of the room. Your mom is pouring a drink at the drinks cabinet. Look at coffee table. Drinks on coasters like proper civilized people. You can't see your keys. 
talk to the mom? Tears immediately start to appear in her eyes. My son, off to America. She gives you a hug. Ask about... Keys? Ask mom... About keys? Hmm. Look for keys... Okay, maybe the kitchen? I'll look around for a sec. Coffee table. Drinks. Oh, um... One of the... Oh, one of the chairs is overflowing with jackets and coats. Um... Look at... Coats. You search through all the jackets and coats until you find yours. Aha! Car keys in the pocket. You grab both. Okay. Go to car. Go to hallway. Keys in hand, you head back into the hall. Jen thanks you for helping her out. She has work in the morning and no one else is in any fit state to drive. You can handle it though. You know the road like the back of your hand. Don't you? Go to car. Drive car. Uh, where am I? Am I in the hallway? Jen is standing by the front door, all ready to go. Go to front door. You open the front door and walk out into the freezing night. Oh no. <laughs> I heard it. The cold air hits you. You're glad you have your jacket with you. There's a dusting of snow around you as you step down from the porch. The yard extends around the back of the house, and the car sits at the front of the house. Can I go to the backyard? She signs and comically taps her feet. Or sighs, rather. <laughs> Apart from the little light escaping from the party indoors, the yard is pitch black. You used to love stargazing here. You stumble around the darkness looking for the perfect spot to take in the majesty of the night sky. Look at sky. Gaze up at the night sky. For some reason, you don't recognize any of the star patterns tonight. Hmm. Go to the front yard. Jennifer looks relieved as you head back round to the front of the house. Same description as before. Go to car. You fumble with a car handle, confused, until Jen tells you to maybe use the key in your hand. It really sounds like they are completely drunk. Use key. Fumbling with the car keys, you eventually get the door open and climb inside. The car is freezing. As you fumble around with your seatbelt, your sister opens up the car glove box and hands you a note and a key that was inside. She tells you that it's for when you return. So that's why there's a key in the glove box. Read note. The note is from your dad and reads, Hi son, hope you enjoy your break. You'll need to fire up the generator around back to get power and lights on. Also found something in the attic for you. It's in your room. Enjoy. Car is freezing. Uh, both you and Jen have your seatbelts on and are ready to go. It's time to go. Go. Um. Use car. Drive Jen home? The car doesn't move, given that the engine isn't actually on. It's like you've never driven before. <laughs> uh, turn on car. You try to turn the ignition with sheer willpower, despite holding keys in your hand. Okay, use keys. Takes a number of attempts, but you eventually slot the key into the ignition. See, I can't tell if this is, like, sort of jokey. Just because I'm, like, you know, not doing things in, like, the proper humanly order. Or if it's just because Asian is completely drunk. But I'm pretty sure Asian's completely drunk. Turn on car. Turn the key in the ignition and the car roars to life. Use car. Drive car. The car squeals, but stays stationary. 
Jen suggests releasing the brake, giving you a wide-eyed stare. I think it's on purpose, actually. It's interesting. Yeah, they're like... The writing is sort of chiding me, chiding me for being stupid, like not doing basic things like actually using the key or taking off the brakes, but I think it's on purpose, actually. Like, I think that's trying to create... It's kind of using the natural fact that you kind of fumble in a text parser like this because you don't know all you don't have all the facts and know all the information on exactly what the state of everything is you're not exactly sure what's implied and what you need to explicitly do like you know I thought just drive car would do it but then okay I gotta use the key then I gotta turn on the car then I gotta release the brake I think that's on purpose because it creates sort of the feeling like your character is fumbling around and drunk because they apparently are Possibly. So I, th I think it's very much on purpose. Okay. Um, turn off break. Uh, use it. Parking brake. Use break. Unbreak. <laughs> um, look around. Steering wheel, handbrake. Oh, handbrake. Handbrake, not parking brake. Okay. Use handbrake. Wait, what? Release handbrake? Oh, I'm doing the wrong break. I'm doing break like break a bull, not break like hand break. You very hesitantly release the handbrake. Okay, can I drive car now? You put the car in gear and pull out the driveway like a first time driver. You really shouldn't be driving. You, I, am driving very drunk on the road towards the town where your sister stays. Jen started dozing off as soon as the journey got going. This shouldn't take long. You come to a junction. Is it left or right? You can't remember. Uh... Right? Go right? You don't want to, but you'd better ask Jen for directions. Ask Jen for directions. She grunts and throws her arm to the left. It's left. Of course it's left. You turn the car left to the junction and accelerate off. Confident that you're on the right road now, you loosen up and put your foot down on the accelerator. You feel powerful as the engine roars at your command. Jen sits up in her chair and clutches your arm. She asks you to slow down. Slow down. That's not what really happened, though, is it? You're all over the place, James. Pull over. Jen is hitting her arm and yelling at you. Crazy sister. Strange, there's a set of headlights coming directly at you, but really slow, like slow motion. Uh, you're not sure why the headlamps are in front of you. Everything's all, like, misspelled, slurred. Um... What do I do at this point? Slow down. You try to react, but your body isn't responding. There's nothing you can do to stop this. There's no way to control it. The lights merge with your car. The James, out for fuck's sake, pull over! The world around you begins to scream. James! It was at this very moment, wasn't it, James? The moment you lost it all. Your sister, her parents, herself. And then you made it worse. Go on, show us what you did. 
You wake up in the car, your world is upside down, your seatbelt struggles against gravity trying to hold you in your seat. An impact into another car has torn a hole in the chassis. Poisonous fumes spill into your car from the engines. You're in grave danger. You have to get out of here. Get out. You can't move, your seatbelt is still in place. Your seatbelt. You release yourself from the seat. Gravity takes over as you slump onto the roof of the car. Get out. You squeeze through the wreckage and fall to your knees on the ground next to your vehicle. Every breath brings pain to your chest. Your head is throbbing. A blue car has smashed into the passenger side of your car. Your life cannot be ruined by this. You are standing holding your whiskey and your dad's note and flashing lights are approaching at a distance. Use whiskey? Yes, good, James. What exactly do you want to do with the whiskey? Drink it? Toss it? Come on, James. Drink this now, you're gonna get what's coming to you. Yes, um... Pour out the whiskey? Well, that's... They'll eventually find it there, and they'll link it to you. Throw whiskey? I can't just toss it away without thinking. They'll find it, and they will come to you. Uh. So what do I do with it, then? Um, do I, like, plant it in the other car? Plant whiskey? With the lights approaching closer, you begin to hear the shrill of their sirens. You simply cannot go to jail for this. You clean the bottle to remove your connection with the whiskey. You then very deliberately spill the remainder of the bottle's contents onto the driver and you toss the incriminating evidence onto his passenger seat. A circle of flashing lights surround you, illuminating the crash site in the darkness. Behind them, an army of people all staring. One figure steps out, a silhouette, and walks towards you. Ask for help? You're not making any sense. Um, talk to... Person? You try to talk, but you're not making any sense. The silhouette is a police officer, and in uniform. He beckons you to approach. Approach. Um, go to police officer. As you approach the man, as you approach the man, the pulsing lights around you get dimmer and dimmer while the pain in I your head increases. You. I know you're tearing yourself apart over it, but no matter what you keep telling yourself, you have to listen to me. That accident, that poor man, me. You have to remember. It was all your fault. I know what you did. How you left me there to protect yourself. Planting evidence on some poor man. You went headfirst into that officer and you wrecked all of our lives. And then you couldn't even take responsibility. You did the right thing for you and no one else. Save yourself. Only it was wrong, wasn't it? Look at you now. Utterly consumed by it. Say it, James. Say it. Tell them. Listen to yourself. It has to end, James.
do you not understand? This episode you're having must come to an end. Mr. Alexander is always watching remotely. I don't know if anyone else is ever with him. Do you remember? Stop the session, Mr. Mission. All of your episodes were recorded to tape. This... Oh, what did that say? back to where we started. Put an end to this nightmare. You can do this, James. You can let go. Well, I think we've made progress today, Mr. Hishin. I guess we should tell the police what you've told us. Although I don't suspect they'll take you anywhere. I think you'll be with us for quite some time. Come on, let's get you back to your shows. I'll see you tomorrow. I'm a bit surprised. I honestly was expecting uh, there to be some sort of a twist. I mean, I guess there was, in that none of what had happened in these episodes was real, really, but they all had threads of truth running through them, all stemming from the accident. But I was expecting there to be a twist with the accident. But no, it's just what it appeared to be at first, I guess, which is Asian got drunk and killed their sister and another person. I really like this game. It's so good. What an interesting take on a text adventure. In the first episode, I took the idea of a text adventure and just ran with it, and did something really interesting with it. And then in the second episode, they ran with it in a different direction, and then in the third one, in another direction, and then the fourth one wasn't even really much of a text adventure for the most part. Like, it's so unique. I love how they did something new for each episode. It's very cool. And how they have these at least mostly for episode 1, 2, and 3, they had these super rich and detailed and just gorgeous kind of settings for which you do the text adventuring in. All these little switches and dials and things to look at. So cool. Yeah, I thought it was fantastic. So that has been Stories Untold. I hope you enjoyed it as much as I did, and thanks for watching. <laughs>